welcome to our comfy and cosy living room in our home here in Brittany in Northwest France. If you're here for the very first time, and if you are, you are so very welcome. My name is Jane. My husband Michael is behind the camera. We are early retirees in our mid 50s, debt and mortgage free, living off our pensions and we live a thrifty and frugal life and we share it with you. And every Wednesday, we invite you in to have a sit down and a cozy little chat. And some Wednesdays, the chats are really easy, aren't they? And some Wednesdays, what we talk about is a bit challenging. And today is one of those challenging days. It's one of those days where if this reflects on you or applies to you, you'll sit there and go, yeah, I know Jane, I know Jane. So today, our midweek money chat, and it is a bit challenging, so stay right to the end. There's some great hints and tips here today. It's all about how not to be broke. start off with a little chat about what do we mean by what is broke what do we mean by being broke well let's first of all define that it's different from being poor poor is lack of income broke is where you have an income maybe even quite a good income but there always seems to be more months than money this money seems to be slipping through your fingers you seem to be spending it at a rate of knots you don't know where it's gone you know, don't you? You know you probably should have done something about this a while ago. You knew you were broke yesterday. You probably knew you were broke last week. You probably knew all along you've been spending too much money. And like I said, there's more month than money. So that's what we mean by broke. And today is about how not to be in that situation. I need to start off by saying this. It's difficult. We understand that. We live in a world of social expectations. I don't dye my hair. I know that's frowned upon by some people. I don't wear makeup. I don't have my nails done. I know that's frowned upon by some people. I used to go to work and get comments about it. I know. I know how hard it is to be the person who has the old car when everybody else has got a good car on finance. We know what it's like to choose to live in not a good area when everyone else is mortgaged to the ear olds because they're living in a good area. We know it's hard. We know it's hard to step back from that. We understand that. Social pressures are real. They are honestly real. Some people sneer at people for shopping in the discount supermarkets and not another supermarket. We know that. We've been on the receiving end of it, so we absolutely know that. And I'm gonna put a link below to two videos. One is about, have, about frugal shaming, and the other one is about how we paid off our debts. So we can show you, and you can look back about this, about the story that we have. So we absolutely understand it's hard, but I'm gonna end this little section by saying this. Being broke is hard. You know when there's more month than money? That's hard, isn't it? Changing that and stop being that person is equally hard. Choose your hard. I did say this was going to be a challenging chat this week and the first one is a challenge and you might think oh when I've said it but the first one is this be honest be honest with yourself be honest with your partner does your partner know what you're spending do you know what your partner's spending be honest with your family this might be the first time in a very long time you've said no to your children no, my lovely, mummy and daddy cannot afford that. We cannot afford to do that. You might have to say no and be honest to your friends and colleagues. No, I can't go on that stag do to Falaraki. I'm sorry, 
I can't go on the girly weekend shopping trip to Cardiff. Sorry, I cannot go on Auntie Beryl's birthday trip to London to see the shows. Be honest. You knew you were broke, didn't you? Be honest. Be honest with colleagues. You know, I can't go on the works do. Be honest with people if they're collecting money for charity. I'm not saying don't do that in the future when you've sorted yourself out. I'm not saying give a tiny donation or a small donation, but don't think that you have to put your hand in your pocket and, you know, hand over 40, 50 pounds because everybody else is doing it. No, be honest. You're in a situation where you're not current with everything maybe, you're not current with all your bills, you're not up to date or you have no emergency fund, or you have no sinking funds, or you have no savings whatsoever. That really is the definition of broke, isn't it? So be honest. There are things that for quite a long time you're gonna have to say no to. There are people you're gonna have to say no to. I did say it was a challenging point to make, but you know you if you're in this situation, you have to do this. We know it's gonna be painful, but the first thing you have to do is be honest. My next point, I'm gonna title, start now. Now, whenever we come to saving or writing a budget or starting sinking funds or tackling debt or any of those issues, we've put them off before. And if we're gonna stop being broke, we are not gonna put them off a minute longer. We're gonna do something about it right now. And I'm gonna to refer to my notes here to help me. First of all, if you are in debt, first of all, know what debts do you have? List them all. How much are they in total? How much are they every month? Next thing you need to do after that is start a debt snowball. And like I said, there's a link below to how we paid off our debts. I'll also put a link below to the infamous Dave Ramsey. You can't get any better advice, so take it from him. If you have any debt, you need to be working out a spending plan of what you've got, because those debts are gonna come first. The next thing I'm gonna get you to start doing, that you may never have done this, you're gonna track every penny you spend. Get some kind of a budget book, get some kind of a budget system. If you're somebody who is welded to their mobile phone, Get yourself a budgeting app. Write yourself a zero balanced budget. I'll also pink put a link below to how we do that. We almost every month share with you how we do our zero balanced budget. Still looking at my notes here. So itemize everything that you have that you could sell. And that's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Because if you've been spending money like you were able to print your own. You're gonna have lots of stuff around the place that you don't read, you don't use, you don't wear, that bicycle you bought, that exercise bike, that Peloton that you bought that you thought that'd be a good idea and you've never used it. So whatever you've got, sell it. And you think, oh, well, I won't get very much money for it. Well, you'll get zero money for it sitting in the garage. So. There you go, those are just some hints of things that you can start doing right away. Come back here every Wednesday for a good talking to. Sometimes it's a cosy chat, it's not always this stern. I'm genuinely nice, I promise you. But whatever it is you need to do, get doing it, start it right now. Now, the next section I'm going to title, Get Help. 
So the first person you're gonna get some help from is going to be your partner. If you are in a relationship, you really need to be doing this together. And it does really, it's really difficult when you are on board together, but it's even more difficult if you are not on board together. And that does mean you're gonna to have to sit down and have some quite serious talks together. So you're going to make sure that you get yourselves on a written budget. If you do not know how to do that, do your research into how to do it. If you have any debts that are you are smothered with, go and look for the help that is available there. In the UK, I would recommend Step Change. If you just put those two words into Google, it will take you to the help that you need. Do you need any financial help? Do you need to speak to your bank? Do you need to speak to your credit card company? Do you need to take a good look at reducing your energy costs in your home. Do your research on that. The energy companies are out there. They are certainly not offering anybody anything more than a high price, but there is advice out there as to how to cut your energy bill. I'm still looking at my notes here. The next thing you can do about getting some help is to get in some help to earn some more money. It will get you out of this current situation. It will give you some money to save. It will give you some money to put towards sinking funds. It will help you. Starting point of getting some help. Speak to your own boss. Are there any more hours available at work? Are you in line for promotion? Can you push for that? Can you put yourself forward for a job vacancy at work that will pay more money? Now then there's the side hustles. And here is just one I'm going to suggest to you. For example, are you somebody who likes to go out? Are you like somebody who goes to go out? Do you like to go out to eat? Do you like that kind of atmosphere in a pub or somewhere to eat? If that is the case, look for the job vacancies there. If you just worked on Saturday, the afternoon shift to closing time in a pub, that money alone may be the solution to your problem to stop you from being broke because it's money that you can save. So get some help, look for professional advice, speak to friends and family, speak to friends as well. You'd be quite surprised. When we did this many, many years ago, all of a sudden friends and family and people were saying to us, we were in exactly the same situation. And the help that we got from each other was the support we gave each other by all of us saying, let's stop this and let's do something about it. My next section I'm going to title Save 10%. Now, if that is a huge, huge mountain range of an amount of money, you may have never saved money ever, ever before. And again, the link is below to our savings challenge. Really simple savings challenges. But this week is about tough love, isn't it? This is about the most difficult things that we've got to do. And one of the most difficult things we have to do is change from being spenders to savers. And if I was to ask a broke person to track everything, absolutely everything they spent in a month, there may be things in there that they don't need. They may be buying too many takeaways. They may be eating out too often. They might be having too many coffees. They might be spending too much money on things that aren't entirely necessary that they could, could cut back on. So as a starting point on anybody who's going to save, so this person that I'm talking to, this hypothetical person I'm talking to, doesn't have any debt. They are current on everything and they do not have any debt. Yes, they may have a car loan. Yes, they may have a mortgage, but they don't have any of the other debt. They don't have an overdraft, they don't have any credit cards, but they just spend all their money every single month. And it is the first point that you really must do, is at the very least, is to put 10% aside. So, I've already given you the advice to start writing that written budget, and the first line on any budget needs to be your overall savings. And the lines under that needs to be for your sinking funds. I'll go into those in another video another day. But really, really, and I know this is hard. I know it's hard. 
because I've been the person who did not save 10% of my income. And that is a minimum. That really is a minimum. We should be putting at least 10% of our income aside every single month to put into a pension. Most people it's about six to seven and a half percent and sometimes the employer makes up the difference. But a lot of the times the employee is putting in 10% of their income. So you think to yourself, well, Jane, you're now up to 20%. Yeah, and that's what people who are not broke do. And I learned to be the person who was not broke. And initially, I can tell you, hand on heart, it was hard and I missed the money. But after a while of not having that money, that it just goes into savings or it goes into your pension, you do not miss it. So there's, I told you it was tough love today. I told you it was challenging. It's 10%. And if you're one of those people, like I said, who is broke, look and track your spending for a few weeks. Look at where your money's going. Keep every single receipt. Are you buying, I don't know, beauty products or games or art material, anything. I don't know what you spend your money on. I absolutely don't know and I'm not suggesting I know. But look at all those things that you think, well, actually I've got those, but I like to buy more. I make quilts. It would be so easy for me every time I went into a fabric shop to buy something that caught my eye. So I know what it's like. So there's the best piece of advice that I'm gonna give anybody at all. We do it ourselves. We've done it for a very, very long time now. And it is to save at least 10% of your net take home pay. My final point today, I'm gonna to give it the title of learn new skills. Often we're broke because we think we're stuck, we think we can't move forward, oh I have to pay someone to do that because I can't do that, oh I go out to eat with my friends because I can't cook, I throw these clothes away because I can't mend them or I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with this because it's a specialist way of washing it. That's what I mean by learn new skills. So learn new skills, it could be job related skills, it could be qualifications based skills, it could be a language based skill, it could be something that happens in your home or in your life. A great thing that we've always been doing all of our lives is we always spend time researching how to earn more money and that won't just be in our jobs, we've learned to do it in other ways. So whether it's, you know, for example, how would you rent out part of your house on Airbnb is an example. What are the legalities of that? What are the tax implications of that? Those are all things that you can learn. That's what I mean by learn a new skill. Are you spending a lot of money on entertainment where you could have a hobby that you could do, whether it's from gardening, some kind of craft, some kind of art, some kind of music that you can learn yourself? Now you're watching me here and now on YouTube. YouTube is your resource and your teacher and your confidant and your friend and it tells you and helps you in so many ways. I love making quilts. I have learned absolutely every single bit of it from YouTube, saving me money that I never went to a single class. So learn new skills. You are not stuck. Nobody is stuck. There is always some way that you can make some kind of improvement in your life to stop being broke. did say this week was a bit of a challenge, changing your life, that if you are someone who is overspending to be somebody who is a saver, is not easy. We've been there, we've changed our lives many years ago now, and we live what we tell you, we live what we share with you. So it is, we understand it's not easy. And I do hope that I wasn't too hard on you today. I am really a nice person. 
If you like what you hear here today, would you please consider becoming a subscriber? It costs you absolutely nothing, but it does help us get our videos out there. I would really love it if absolutely everybody who watches this video could give it a like. It's really important that you give it a like because again, it gets our videos out there. We also love it most of all when you leave a comment. So I have a question for you. Have you ever been in any of these circumstances and what have you done to make your life better? Have you been a person, for example, who in the past didn't live off a written budget, but you do now? Are you a person who didn't have any savings in the past, but you do now? Are you somebody maybe like us many years ago who were in debt, but paid it off and changed your circumstances? I really do love it. I reply to absolutely every single comment. It just leaves me to say, on behalf of Mike and I, thank you so much to everybody who watches our videos. Thank you so much to absolutely everybody who lets the advertisements roll. It really does help us because that's how we as YouTubers make some money from Google AdSense. So thank you everybody and we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.